Hey, what is happening, my fearless networking friend, Todd Falcone here. Welcome back to another episode. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the social selling game, right? So uh, social media, uh, I mean, I'll be frank with you. I have a, a, a love-hate relationship. Love it because I've made so much money on it, created massive numbers of new relationships, and it's just tremendously helped me in my business. I don't know if I hate. Hate's probably a strong word, but... Uh, the reality is, uh, up until I really came up with, with a plan, uh, trying to come up with ideas to entertain this ever-hungry beast, if you will. I mean, social media is a really interesting little animal. Uh, you're always having to constantly put information out there. And, uh, and if you don't, you're, you, so here's the thing about social media. You either have to be in and all in or not in. If you're, if you're using it to, to build your business. So if you're using social media to sell social selling, then you absolutely need to be very, very consistent. So what I want to do in today's episode is just give you five simple tips to improve your social selling game. So if you are using social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, Clubhouse, or whatever else it is that's out there, um, you're on your game. Okay, so let's go into these, uh, these five simple tips that I think will help you definitely improve your social selling game. Number one is very simple, focus on building relationships. Now that's actually interesting because it's in that respect, social media or social selling isn't really that much different than selling elsewhere. You know, it's interesting because uh, you know, we, we take the term social and selling and we put it together. And, you know, so, so in other words, we're using social media to sell. And, but, but the reality is if we're selling goods and services, if we're selling our opportunity, um, we're just happen to be using social media. It's kind of like the phrase, um, what is it? Um, uh, oh, attraction marketing. So isn't all marketing attraction? Isn't the whole premise upon Marketing, in fact, if you look up the definition of marketing, it's all of the things that are involved in moving a good or service to an end user. So somebody got, some marketer got very creative and put the word attraction in front of it uh, to call it attraction marketing, just like it, you know, we have social selling, if you will. So building relationships is crucial. So that means, okay, so if we want to sell more product, if we want to recruit more people on social media, that we've got to do things where we're building relationships. Well, what is that? If, if we look specifically at social media, that means we have to engage with our prospects. That if somebody comments on our stuff, that we comment back. If they share something that we put out on social media, that we take the time to uh, uh, write them and, and, hey, thanks, I really appreciate you for you know, sharing that post that I did. Uh, being engaged with people, asking questions, being involved, and actually building rapport, right? Because it, there's, a, there's a, when I did my NLP studies many moons ago, I remember in this book, uh, I think it was by Milton Erickson, if I, if I can recall correctly, which was the founder of Ericksonian Hypnosis. And the, the quote, if you will, was, in the presence of rapport, anything is possible. And so what is rapport? Rapport is this sense of alignment where we feel comfortable with one another. And when people feel a, a alignment with another person or a group of people, we, you know, just, it, it tends to take the tension out of the shoulders. We feel relaxed. We feel good. We feel like, I don't know, it just feels good communicating with you. I feel, it's like, hey, it's like you're a brother from another mother. I've, I've, I met you just now, or I met you 10 minutes ago, and it feels as if I've known you forever. That feeling of comfort is something that we want to create, and that's, that's done through the process of building relationships with people. So what I would suggest that you do when it comes to social media is look at how you've been acting on the different platforms that you're involved in. Are you really connecting with people? Are you engaging with your audience? Uh, you know, I, I know because I've seen it. Uh, it's per, you can see stuff on social media. You can learn a lot, by the way, on social media through observation of how others do things on social media. And it's, it's rather interesting if you actually take the time to do it and you can really learn 
how to be more engaging and how to build better relationships, not only through, you know, obviously doing your own personal engagement, but really looking at people that are on their social media game. Number two, use data to your advantage. Okay, so what does that mean, using data to your advantage? Well, something as simple as looking at your likes, comments, and shares. You know, when you post, like for example, if I do any post, I think before I post. I don't ever post random stuff. Now I might post something that's kind of random. I remember posting the word bacon about 10 years ago on Facebook. It literally said bacon, period. But that wasn't random. It was, I mean, I guess it was from the, from some standpoint, it's, it's kind of random and weird. A dude just posted the word bacon, but I thought about it before I did it. It wasn't like I just, oh, so let me pick up some oh, bacon. That'll be interesting to see what happens with that post. And what, what did happen is I think, I mean, literally bacon period blew up. One word, period. And it blew up. It was love it, hate it, created all this conversation around it. So there are data points that you can look at that are right in front of you. You can also look at insights, and I'm not going to go into detail here, uh, but the different, all the different social media platforms that, you, that you're on provide you data. And you can go find that information and access it. And, and I think it's really important that you look at it. Uh, again, something else you can do through observation here is to like, okay, you've all done a post wherever it might be, whether it, let's just take Instagram and Facebook. You did a post and it went crazy. And then you did a post and it was crickets, meaning nobody responded to it. Nobody liked it. Nobody commented. Not, it was like almost zero engagement. Well, that, that's a, both of those situations are situations where you can actually use data to your advantage. You're like, okay, well, that post that I did, I need to pay attention to that because that thing just rocked. And I would even put it into a file. I would save it. I would put it into your journal. I would do whatever you've got to do so that you can replicate things that work. Now, I'm going to go, go into something very briefly that you guys have all heard me say, depending on you know, how long you've plugged into me, but like success is, one definition of success is, you know, do, you know, if you find something that works, you continue to do it over and over again. And if you do something that doesn't work, then you stop doing it. So it's repeat what works, delete what doesn't. So if we're looking at data, whatever the data is, likes, comments, and shares, or whatever, whatever else you have access to, depending, de depending on the platform, views, for example, five second views, three second views, whatever it might be, 30 second views, watch the video to the end, these are all things that you can learn from. And again, from an observational standpoint, uh, w when you're looking through whatever feeds that you're looking through and you see somebody else's post that got amazing comments, likes, shares, or just overall engagement, or you see somebody else's post and they get nothing, you can pay attention to that too. You know, for example, I was on somebody's page just last week and somebody who's on social media and like literally every single post that this person has done in the last couple of months is zero engagement like no likes no comments no shares nothing it's like their audience is asleep and then i looked at another person's uh, another client's uh, wall on facebook like this is maybe two or three weeks ago and she was crazy she was posting like 20 30 times a day, like just ran, just weird, just boom, 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 boom. And I'm looking at the engagement there and there's nothing. So again, use data to your advantage, right? That's number two. Number three is develop a content strategy. You know, a content strategy involves a number of different things. Uh, number one is identifying who your customers are, like who's your ideal customer for whatever it is that you're marketing or selling. Uh, like it's kind of hard, for example, to sell weight loss to a skinny person, for example. So, you know, like, I mean, if you're dealing, if, if your audience, if, if you're, if you're in a weight loss company and you're selling, you know, weight loss products, but you're talking to a skinny guy that doesn't need to lose weight. I mean, the guy doesn't have the challenge. The guy doesn't have the problem. So part of uh, generating a content strategy around whatever it is that you might be selling is to figure out and take the time to write down, like, what are the challenges that they have? Um, 
you know, what, what, I think this is such a great question, and I, I'm not going to pose it exactly how Dan Kennedy poses it, but it's a pretty, pretty powerful question. And it's like, the question goes, you know, what, what, what keeps that person up all night staring at the ceiling, being unable to fall asleep because they're so troubled by it? So I'm going to repeat that so and you can pause and you can rewind or you can do whatever you need to do. And, and again, this is probably not exactly how Dan, Dan Kennedy does this question, but it's pretty close. What keeps your prospect up all night staring at the ceiling, unable to fall asleep because they're so troubled by this thing that's on their mind? Now, if you think about that question and you ask that question, related to your target audience of people that you're looking to, you know, for example, people that, that could be targets for your product or even your business. And you can answer that question and, and, and know this is the thing that keeps them up all night. Then you can develop a content strategy around that problem or those problems that really are troubling your target market. And they're going to respond to it because you're literally answering and addressing the thing that's like literally keeping them up. You guys, have, I, I, I can't imagine that if you're watching me, there's, you know, there haven't been nights where something is keeping you up all night and it's troubling you or your mind is spinning out of control and you're, you know, I just can't go to sleep because this thing is on my mind. Well, if somebody came to you and they provided a solution to that and then the next night you could fall asleep so restfully and get a beautiful night's sleep because your problem was solved, that's a pretty winning situation, don't you think? Number four is in this crowded social media place that we live in, I think it's important that you use some degree of personalization so that you can stand out from the pack. So, for example, when you identify somebody's having a challenge or problem, and then you can, you can communicate to that individual uh, addressing the specific challenge or problem that they have. Now, this is, this is taking like... Let's say you identify, let's say, you, again, let's go back to weight loss for a second. Uh, and you are dealing with somebody who's struggling to lose weight. And maybe you did a post about something around weight loss or, you know, you know ask some provocative or some, some kind of question where you got engagement. And somebody responded and said, I've always struggled to lose weight and I've tried this and that. And, and then whatever, whatever, I'm not going to go into specifics, but then what you do is you personalize it by reaching out to that individual personally, like in other words, a direct message on, on Instagram or you're messaging them on Facebook, and you're actually providing them something specific based on what they said. Maybe it's an article or maybe it's um, you know a checklist or maybe it's something, whatever that something is, but it's personalized to that individual based on uh, what they said in a, in a comment, for example. You do little things like that. Again, you're going to build stronger, better relationships than you know, po just posting and hoping that somebody's going to join you. It's got to be this engaging, interactive atmosphere that you're creating in order for you to sell more of whatever it is that you're selling online. And number five, and this should be obvious to everyone, is leveraging the power a video, like, okay, well, you, you're probably seeing me on video right now unless you're on my podcast, and then if you're on my podcast, you're hearing me on audio. But the truth is that video dominates. So I don't know how you can be on social media and really want to amp up or ramp up your social selling game and not incorporate video into your overall game plan. Uh, video is the most consumed type of content on pretty much every social media platform out there, uh, whether it's recorded or live. Live video actually is even typically better than uh, recorded video uh, for whatever reason. You know, if you go live on Facebook, for example, versus posting a video on Facebook, uh, you're going to tend to get more views, generally speaking, on a live video than you will on a recorded video. But look, if you wanna build a relationship and, and be providing value around uh, whatever subject matter that you're involved in with whatever kinds of products that your company markets, then video must be a part of it. And look, if you're not comfortable with it, I get it. Uh, I remember like I was always comfortable talking to people 
uh, and then I had to stare into a, a video. Uh, I remember I went to Destin, Florida the first time and there was this big giant camera, this big studio camera, like the movie's big, huge one. And there was a big bright shining light in my face and all of a sudden I started staring into the lens and I was like, I went into panic mode because it was like the first time I ever really looked at a camera in that manner. And so I can promise you this, like the more you look at a camera lens, like I'm looking right into the lens right now, the more frequently you do that, the more comfortable you're going to get. But again, if it comes down to social selling and being able to sell more products on social media, video needs to be a part of it. And, and you can do all sorts of things. Watch other people's videos. Pay attention to what other people are doing. Hey, even check this out, even in your specific niche, like let's stick on weight loss, for example, or wait, let's take it weight loss and fitness. So if weight loss and fitness is your thing that your company is doing, wouldn't it make sense then to pay attention to what other people are doing on weight loss and fitness? Oh, wow, this person did this really cool sped up like high speed video on making this uh, super healthy meal for their family or this person showed this exercise routine on you know d d getting a great ab workout in five minutes or less or whatever you know what i'm saying the the important thing is that you're incorporating video if you're if you're selling anything on social media video needs to be a part of it if you're uncomfortable i get it but the only way that you're going to get comfortable is you begin to do videos you practice whatever you're doing before you do the video. We can do that in another, uh, you know, another episode. We can get into it. But I think the important thing is that, uh, and I do see, look, I see this. I see, so I see networkers, okay? I'm online. I see it all the time. I go to other people's Facebook pages and other people's Instagram pages and other people's pages, period. And I see a ton of networkers, believe it or not, that if I scroll through their newsfeed, I see no video. They're like literally missing one of the greatest ingredients to selling more products, building better relationships, and just doing more business by incorporating video. Yet a lot of people, believe it or not, I mean, I think it is believable because people, uh, you know, a lot of times shy away from it because they're afraid of it. But like, look, you can't shy away from it any longer. You got to face it and actually start incorporating video. Might be uncomfortable the first time, might be less. And, and the other part of it is the vulnerability did I say that right? Vulnerable, it's, you know, you get it. Being vulnerable is cool. Like even just now making like, okay, I'm not going to edit that out and say, well, you know, I couldn't say the word vulnerability. I'm just going to leave it in there because, hey, people love the imperfections. They love the authenticity. They love the realness. And when you're real, people can relate to that more so than being super polished and perfect all the time. So just five simple tips for you guys today to improve your social selling game. Uh, there's a resource here on my page. Uh, you might be, if you're on my podcast, appreciate you guys. If you're on my YouTube channel, uh, appreciate you as well. But you definitely want to come to my page, toddfalcone.com forward slash episode 221 to see this resource that I have available to you on improving your social selling game. You can only get it if you come to where this episode resides on my page, which is T-O-D-D-F-A-L-C-O-N-E, toddfalcone.com forward slash episode 221. We'll see you next time. Have an amazing day.